if you think about it, the people who are in the most senior levels of most companies today, you know, are generally long-time employees of the company. They're people that rose up through the ranks. If not at their company, maybe at a competitor or a similar company. They're they're people that master learned and mastered the 20th century way of business. So almost by definition, they're going to struggle with this, you know. Yeah. And, and and I see a lot of organizations where that where it's the newer employees, the people who are at the you know much closer to the customers, much closer to the the front lines, you know, much closer to what they call the gemba and the manufacturing, at the place of where the actual work is done. Those are the people that are feeling the tectonic shifts and are are faced with the disruption in a much more immediate way. And part of the challenge is to kind of reverse that corporate hierarchy and say, wait a minute, if we're going to bring innovation to every level of the company, that means even the most senior leaders need to be trained, need to learn, uh, need to kind of be humble about you know, having all the answers or not. And, and the companies that have been able to do that, I think it has a really remarkable impact uh, on, the, on the company's overall productivity. Yeah, and, and it, building on that a little bit too, leaders that are able to um, ex accept, this, the again, the spirit and the principle that if I'm sending my team out to go get evidence, whether or not they should pursue a certain direction, um, and they come back with that evidence, and as long as I believe, you know, there's enough rigor behind how they went and gathered that evidence that this isn't, you know, they're not making it up. They didn't plant a smoking gun somewhere. They actually, uh, you know, collected the evidence in a way that is uh, that is normal. Then, you know, I should honor that and and either ask them to to pursue a different track or go get more evidence. But at the end of the day, at, at some point I have to sort of acknowledge that, well, that idea probably isn't going to work. Um, we have enough evidence to, that suggests this isn't, we should stop course or we should move in this new direction or we should keep going because wow, it actually looks like it is working. Um, nor should I say, I'm not going to fund that based on, you know, oh, I've seen that in the past not work. It should be on are the behaviors that we think consumers or customers need to do. Yeah. Are they you know, it's 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 respect for the truth, it, and I yep. think as a leadership development principle, it's also very exciting. You know, for companies that are looking for, you know, how do I develop, how do I identify and develop those next generation high potential leaders? Like this is one of the behavioral characteristics you really look for. Is are you know do they put the truth above their own ego and above you know are they more interested in being right for the customer than being right for themselves and for their career? And you know, the people that are interested in hogging credit and who you know always have to be right about everything and have to have all the answers and always need to tell people what to do, like. Those people do, you know, that type A kind of manager personality is like very classic 20th century, you know, MBA caricature. Those people do go far in a lot of organizations, but but when you think about who are the people who are really going to be those dynamic leaders in the 21st century that are really going to drive the kind of change that we need, I think they're much more going to look, they're gonna, just going to look a lot more like what we're talking about, a little bit more humble, a little bit more focused on external reality, and a little bit more interested in getting to the truth um, than being right themselves. Yeah, yeah, and I think that is one thing that's uh, it's very unique about the culture into it. But I do see it in other organizations as an emerging theme, right? Um, you know, we're we're very lucky that we have Scott Cook, who's you know very influential here at Intuit. Still, he's not the CEO, he's not running the the company, but he's he certainly is the the the, the leader of the innovation principles, and I call it the spiritual leader of innovation <laughs> here yeah. at Intuit, where where uh, you know he leads the way. He he countless times has been uh, proven wrong when he asked teams, well, I, I, it looks bad to me, but if you can go get the, if you can prove that people will do X, Y, or Z, then, hey, I'm willing to be proven wrong. And teams, sure enough, will come back and say, yeah, actually, we got people to, to do this or that. Um, and, you know, Scott's always the first one to say, wow, that's surprising to me. I didn't think it would happen, but you've got the evidence. You know, far be it for me to, to, to tell you to, to stop in your tracks at this point. And that sends a really strong signal. So those are organizations that are, thinking about kind of going back to our theme about how do I get started here? Um, it, it doesn't necessarily take a senior executive to say we're doing it. It takes a senior executive to actually model the behavior and, and actually yeah. do it. Um, even if you know they have to do it 5, 10, 20, who knows how many times they have to do it before it, it, it takes hold. Um, that's something that those leaders of the future have to be able not to just do. They've got to actually walk the walk. They have to, yeah. they have to do it. Um, people pick up on that very quickly. They know the difference. Very quickly. Very quickly. Yeah, very well, quickly. Scott, Scott is world class yeah. for sure. Um, and, and I think that, you know, one of the things I admire so much about him is is that leading by example, is is willing to say, hey, um, you know, here's what I expect my managers to do. You know, I expect them just like me to 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 be humble in the face of evidence and then to really, it's easy to say that and it's easy to do it on a good day. You know, I, I remember when I first started thinking this way and and developing the you know what ultimately my own management style would would eventually be called lean startup. 
I remember, you know, it was early on. It was pretty easy, like for a project that I wasn't that I didn't particularly care about, or something where I wasn't very invested in the outcome. To be like, yeah, we should totally experiment. But it was a totally different thing when it's my pet project and I'm the one who wants us to do it, and someone comes into my office and says, hey, you know, we're gonna run an experiment, right? And I'm like, oh god, damn. you know, like I, I was so invested, I didn't want to run an experiment. I just wanted to, you know, to get it done. 